Hello and welcome back to the ROI channel, the channel that's obsessed with all things to do with the art and science of return on investment. Uh, thank you to those who are following the portfolio on eToro. Click the link below and you can add the portfolio to your watch list. Or if you're ready to rock and roll, you can copy uh, ad funds and copy the portfolio. Uh, today we're looking at a stock review uh, at Bristol Myers Squibb Pharmaceutical Company, uh, one of the biggest uh, in the US at a, a really uh, stalwart company that's been around for years. So we're going to talk about how I think Bristol Myers is underappreciated today and well, let's get straight into it. If you haven't already liked and subscribed to the YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate you doing so. If you're getting value out of uh, my thoughts and reviews and the intrinsic value that uh, I put on the given stocks, uh, that would greatly help me to spread the word. So, Crassus Investment Formula, what is that? It's the formula through which all our assets must pass if they're to make it into the uh, investment portfolio. So uh, we're looking for companies with low debt, a margin of safety in terms of the industry they're in, uh, the price to value ratio, uh, and obviously margin of safety is a concept that we use when valuing uh, in our valuation techniques of given companies. We're looking for top line sales growth, strong margins or holding firm at least, free cash flow growth and share buybacks ideally. Some quick facts. Okay, so uh, revenue expected to come in at 46%. 0.3 billion, uh, EBITDA a tick under 25 billion US, and over the last 10 years, that's the historic compounded annual growth rate. So 10.6 uh, top line growth rate year on year, and or as a compounded uh, annualized average, and 16.5 for the EBITDA. So phenomenal, phenomenal growth. Uh, this company is being priced as if it's a dying business. It's anything but. Just because it's been around for a long time doesn't mean it's in decline. Market cap 183 billion, enterprise value 170, price as at time of recording $62.11 US cents, shares 2.2 uh, billion on issue. Last year they spent four, uh, almost four and a half billion worth on buying back the shares, which worked out. Uh, I had a, an average price of around sixty dollars, so I think that worked out to be roughly a three percent reduction in the shares on issue, and you're getting paid a dividend yield of three percent. So very important um, to note that while we're waiting for the market to pick up the value. Uh, and re-rate the share price, we're getting paid 3% to wait and they're reducing the share count um, by 3% or growing our claims on the future cash flows by the same amount. Return on capital uh, tick over 9% and net debt to EBITDA uh, just over one and a half. So solid balance sheet, nothing to worry about there. And they've certainly got the cash flow to uh, comfortably service that debt and continue the CapEx for their operations. So here's the price action for the year to date. So it's been mainly flat, slightly up um, year to date. Uh, but considering the, the quality of business that it is, it's strange to find it uh, having gone sideways for nearly 18 months now. These are the key points. It's very simple, all right? Very, very simple. The the value with Bristol My is in the pricing and the, the mispricing, I believe, that the market is applying to the company. So if you... Uh, Look at Bristol Myers valuation on almost any metric you like versus the industry peers. It's so low. It's so low. And there's no good reason why the company is growing as we just saw. The company's got solid balance sheet. The company is uh, a trusted brand name. It's There's no reason I can think of as to why they would ascribe such a low multiple. So the point there, if, you, if you're not familiar with uh, the terms, the industry median multiple is just looking at uh, all the companies in a given industry and working out what is the multiple of their cash or earnings that the market's willing to pay. So let's say you had um, an average of P, an average P of the industry of 10. That means that the, the median, the number at which half the values fall above and half the values fall below, which is different to the mean, but anyway, the median multiple would be 10. So the, the median that the, the market's willing to pay for the earnings is 10 times, and so you're paying 10 times the price of a company's earnings. That would be a P of 10, okay? If you're paying five times, it'd be a P of five, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So where the, the industry's median multiple for the earnings and the EBITDA and the cash flows are, Bristol Myers is about half that, okay? And 
so it's priced as a dying business, but the growth is still there as we've seen. So I think that's a, a, a misprice from market judgment. What I've done here will uh, illustrate that again. So we're looking into 2022. If you follow the cursor on the left-hand side, this is the analyst expectations for free cash flow per share. EBITDA on a per share basis, I haven't allowed for dilution. I've just said, if they keep the same number of shares, hit the expected EBITDA for 2022, what is that on a per share basis? So keep in mind, it could well be a bit higher than that if they buy back more shares. And the expected earnings. Now, this is, I'm being super conservative, wondering, um, you know, whether I've missed anything. So this is, usually I use the median. This here is actually a slightly below the median again. So Bristol Mars is trading below, um, last I checked, six times the, the market cap, the free cash flow. I'm sure so, someone will comment if that's not quite right. But on the ticket terminal, I believe it was about 5.9 and the industry was about 12-ish. So I've given it a bit of a haircut and said, okay, well, what about 10? And the same thing applies for the other methods. If we use um, these multiples, these are the implied prices for each metric. And so if you add them all up and equally weight them as an average, we're expecting the price to re-rate to around about $73, uh, which is about 17% on the upside for uh, a year or more. So that's a, a healthy return, I'm sure you would agree, for such a, a low risk company, uh, quality company. Using the EBITDA, here's uh, fleshing things out a little bit further. I've said, what if we have the historic growth rate for the EBITDA? We're buying the shares today at their price. And at the end, we're getting a, a median or slightly below median multiple on the EBITDA. If we run that back and discount it at the company's weighted cost of capital, what is that as an internal rate of return? Okay, so out of all those cash flows and you discount it back to allow for the time value of money, what would that give us as a, a kind of like a compounded annual growth rate? Okay, so if you think of the interest rate that you get from your savings account when you used to get that, uh, or the mortgage rate you've got to pay, it's probably more applicable now, is say, you know, two or 3%, depending on where you are in the world, that's the same sort of thing, like the, the annualized interest rate, annualized uh, return rate or annualized growth rate. And so 23.6 is very, very healthy for such a low risk company. We're gonna beat the market in just about any year that you like with that. So that's more than gonna compensate us for the risk. Same thing done here. I've just applied the cash flows and the historic growth rate and a slightly lower than median multiple. Same deal, discounted back at the cost of capital, and we're looking at uh, just under a 15% IRR, which should still be market beating in most years. Um, and if you use those as uh, an average, the EBITDA method and the internal rate of return, we're going to get uh, we're going to get quite a healthy IRR. And if you take into consideration, I've been conservative with the multiples applied and conservative with the growth rate, and I have not allowed for any further share reduction, which the company easily could do, uh, we should be north of 20% uh, comfortably in, in both, uh, using both inputs. When I overlay the EBITDA method, the free cash flow method and earnings methods, and I've applied the probability weightings that you can see there, um, this is what we get. So we've got a base case, a bull case, and a bear case that I do for all three inputs. And then I use the historic rate uh, as the, the base case, and then increase it obviously for the bull case and slightly decrease it for the bear case. Then when we get the present value of all those cash flows or earnings, and we apply the probability weighting, we sum up all of those. And for the EBITDA method, we would expect an intrinsic value of nearly $117 for Bristol Myers. So what that means is if we wanna discount it at our required rate, which is a 20% rate of return annualized, if I, uh, if I get a 20% rate of return annualized in the, the stock market, I'm very happy. And so that's the minimum that I'll be looking to accept to take on the risk uh, of investing in the equity. And so same process applies, but I've used the free cash flow numbers and same deal with the earnings. Now, there's quite a large variety between the three, which is why I always like to average them. The reason you'll see, generally speaking, the earnings lower is because earnings become, uh, come a lot lower on the financial statements. Earnings takes into account 
uh, depreciation, amortization, uh, prior write downs, I believe, and some other things. So generally speaking, that's going to understate the performance of the business. Whereas if you've got the EBITDA, that's literally just you know the revenue and then cost of goods sold. And then you've got your EBITDA. Okay. So it's much higher up the line. Free cash flow is a little bit higher up the line again. So I like to use all three. Using an equally weighted average, we're expecting an intrinsic value of $71.10 US cents, meaning uh, if things play out the way that I've projected, and it's just my opinion, that would suggest that for us to get a 20% return, we could pay no more than that amount, okay? Which uh, is getting us excited when you look at a a quality of business like uh, Bristol Myers. So the verdict, uh, what is it? Of course, it's a buy. I've held the shares uh, since the inception of Crassus Fund. And so we've been holding it on for uh, a month and a bit now. I've actually literally just bought some more because I think that uh, the price is dipping lower and I think that I I would like to make it um, a little bit heavier in our weighting towards the healthcare sector in the portfolio. So it makes up around 2.2% of assets under management at current share price and weighting. So the company, uh, as a recap, certainly has low debt. It has a high margin of safety any way you look at it. It's got sales growth, strong margins, and free cash flow growth. And I believe that they will start to use more of that cash flow growth for share buybacks. And when they do, I think. Uh, the market will start to notice the value and realize that they've made a mistake in uh, rating the the multiples way too cheaply. The multiples guys only have to rise to uh, the median and we're looking at almost a double on the upside. So uh, for a company that's been around for such a long time, a healthy, strong balance sheet, that sounds like something that I personally want to be a part of. That's my opinion. And so thank you for watching. If you haven't already, uh, please check out the portfolio, click on the link and add it to your watch list. And you can keep track on uh, news as to what's happening. You'll be able to have access to these videos and more, the analysis that I put out uh, on eToro. And uh, I'll continue to put them out on YouTube for now because we're getting quite a nice little uh, audience, but feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And as always, uh, disclaimer, do your due diligence. I'm not your financial advisor. Make sure that you're only uh, acting in sensible ways out there. um, We work too hard for our money to be throwing it away. So take responsibility for your investments and I wish you all the best. I'll see you in another video soon.